guys, Axis and Alloys here. This is an update video for Global War 1939 to show you my progress on game setup and hopefully we'll be able to hop into a game soon. The big news, we got two nice large tables here. Uh, both are, it's... Uh, we got two tables, each are eight feet long to accommodate the map. Don't know the width, that'd probably be a good thing to know. Uh, but we have some tables on, so now the game is flat out and not on a floor, which would be a terrible thing to do to such a nice looking map. Um, we have a little bit, just a little bit here hangs off the edge. Um, but that's depending on the certain place, as it's a little sloped at the end. But... We officially have an, uh, an official home for it here, which is great to have. And we also have some room on the sides for pieces, chips, facilities, etc. Uh, my one major kind of issue with the tables is they're a little uneven here. So you can see there's kind of a slope down. Let's get a uh, French battleship here. You can see how it's not, because that's flat, and that's flat. So there's a little bit of a slope here in the center of the map, which is not good for the Mediterranean, uh, but towards D.C. and towards San Francisco, it fixes itself out a little bit. So we're still setting up here, transferring pieces down from its previous location. But as you can see, we have most of the nations are set up. Uh, Asia is set up for the most part. Europe is still a work in progress with Germany, but Africa. We have a couple boats that still need to be placed, mainly U-boats and British ships as well. So it's going good on that aspect. I'll we'll kind of give you guys a little intro to what I'm doing for certain facilities and pieces because I'm starting off this with minimal this HBG pieces. I'd love to have more. Um, so I'm probably going to do some ordering of some things that I need from there. But I'm making do with the HBG and Axis and Allies pieces I have. Um, so I'll tell you guys some of my... I don't want to say tricks and tips, but some of my uh, shortcuts to getting around not having a certain piece of a certain kind. Uh, so let's just continue walking around the map here. Now South America, we have a box on that right now, an Axis and Allies box on it here. Probably you guys are noticing a lot of Aussies all around the map. As we can see up in Mongolia, has some Australians, Finland, some Australians, Poland. So I've been using the Aussies because I doubt the Australians will ever get all the way up to Finland or to Poland, uh, especially Poland in one turn. Um, I've been using them for a neutral piece. Um, doing those for strict neutrals, uh, Finland's a, uh, axis aligned, but for Iraq, we have a German infantry. So I've been doing that, uh, cause it's a nice gray neutral color, which helps separate itself as a neutral piece. As you can tell in Iran, I have some U.S. infantry, same thing with Liberia, and then Yugoslavia, I have some British. So any allied piece is really standing in for pro-allied. We just need to put a roundel on there and we'll call them uh, official. Uh, luckily, I have some Dutch pieces, which are really coming in handy. I have an Australian battleship here. And a Netherlands sub. Now, this Australian battleship is really a Netherlands battleship, but they're both on a roundel, which is denoting that they are coastal. So, coastal sub, coastal battleship. 
Um, that's what that's denoting there. In the Philippines and in Reims, you got, can see a little black box there. We're using just like a factory or whatever flipped over. That's denoting a fort. We'll put one in Tobruk as well and all the other places that need one. A lot of the facilities are set up on my Europe 40 map right now. So once that game ends, we'll have a lot more facilities to work with. Right now I'm using some Europe 40 facilities for majors. Um, some majors don't have one, but majority of ones on a capital or an open space have one. We're using some Turkish infantry from the HBG Turkey at War set for Turkey there. And then we're also using them for Spain, Danish. Uh, they're kind of helping out all over the place. As we can see, another battleship of coastal with the roundel there. For French Foreign Legion, it's France, French infantry on a French roundel. I'm planning on getting some bingo chips to use um, for different things there. Uh, but right now, for my veteran infantry, I'm just putting them on a Japanese roundel. Um, so any kind of special unit is just going to go on a roundel. Um, for instance, German Airborne. German um, SS Panzer Grenadiers. Same thing with the fighters. For the Special Naval Landing Force SNLF, I'm using a roundel flipped down for Japan. But then for other Japanese units, for the dive bombers and the naval fighters, for the naval fighters, I'm using my 1941 fighters because they look distinctly different compared to the smaller ones there. And then the dive bombers are just on a round ball. For the US's, I'm using the Marines Corsair for the naval fighter. And then we have the dive bomber, torpedo dive bomber right there on a round ball. So finding creative ways to kind of make do with some of the pieces for Siam. We're using a 1941 Axis and Allies German fighter and German destroyer, which is a Japanese sculpt, though. So it's a Japanese sculpt, but it's in German colors for Siam. Uh, across the map, uh, we're using other... I'll get Holland set up. So we still have uh, some ways to go on the setup. But um, just, you know, putting maybe a British piece in Sweden uh, to mark that. Just so that way we can have a clear understanding of have they been taken or not. Some I might just leave blank because there's no need to put a troop in there unless someone wants to go after them. So that'll be um, interesting there. I've been using... Uh, I, what I believe is the most recent up-to-date setup charts um, for this. In Bulgaria, we have Japanese infantry, Italian infantry for Hungary, and then Romania, some yellow-colored pieces, which look a lot like Romanians. Um, I haven't painted anything, uh, so all of this is fairly stock Axis and Allies pieces or HPG pieces. I probably should just... Buy a copy of uh, 1942 or 1941, spray paint them all white for neutrals, uh, which is something I might do. Uh, but right now we're just using some stock pieces. Hopefully when my game with the Attic Nerd ends, we can bring down the facilities. And that will certainly allow me to get done much faster on setting everything up. So again, it's using a lot of roundels. Um, if I do go the bingo chip route, uh, maybe putting a bingo chip for a fort or a brown bingo chip might represent a special kind of unit. But right now, everything's going so far so good. I'll probably have a video out on my solo game. I'll start off with a solo game of it. 
just so that way I can get an understanding of the rules. And if I want to do anything else, play with a friend or play over YouTube with someone, I can then get going on that. The rules are looking fairly similar to Axis and Allies with some different flares thrown in. So it shouldn't be too hard of a learning curve to it. Uh, it's using the D12 system. Let me get some of my D12s here. Going to the Indian Ocean. We got different color D12s. I don't have any. I got like a black one here, a yellow one. We have some more in the other corner. Um, so we're playing around with our... Um, beautifully colored D12s and making do with what we have here with Global War 1939. So almost entire maps getting set up. If you do plan on setting this up, I would totally 100% recommend having Axis and Allies Europe, Axis and Allies Pacific 1940, and then also maybe one or two more games um, so that way you can contribute more pieces because it does require a lot of pieces, a lot of chips. So making sure you have enough so that way you're not leaving anything out is very important. Uh, however, for some of the neutrals, like I said, Saudi Arabia, I might not, I might not touch anything with just because I don't think, um, I don't think anyone's going to be going in there for the majority of the game there, but Setup's going good, like I already said. Interesting things with the setup. The Japanese and Germans start off with a ton of units here. However, their starting IPC income is quite low compared to the Allies. USA... Um, does not start off with its full income. It starts significantly smaller, and then they roll two D12s each turn. Add that to their production. So then this would actually be a good roll. This would be 19. They'd add that, and once they hit their, their 80, they are good to go. Europe's looking a little clustered. That'll probably fan out once everything begins and hits off. Thank you all so much for watching. I'll be sure to continue putting more things out about Global War 1939. It's a beautiful map. It's looking to be a fun game right now. Once I get everything set up, I'll begin my solo game. So this is Axis and Alloys signing off.